Okay, hey guys, this is Ms. Adelini, and this is our third and final video for the steps of the, of the cellular respiration reactions. Um, this final step is called the electron transport chain. The overall goal is to convert the energy uh, from high energy electrons that were carried to the electron transport chain by NADH and FADH2. We want to convert the energy in those electrons to the energy in ATP. The way that we do this is by taking our electron carriers, NADH and FADH2, that we made during glycolysis, the intermediate step, and the Krebs cycle, and losing electrons to convert these guys back into NAD plus and FAD. The electrons then get passed between protein pumps on the inner mitochondrial membrane, which are drawn as circles, and I have a little key down here as well. So those electrons get passed from protein pump to protein pump, and each of those proteins in the inner mitochondrial membrane uses the energy from those electrons to pump H plus from the matrix on the very inside of the mitochondrion across the inner mitochondrial membrane to the intermembrane space, which is the space between the inner membrane and the outer membrane of the mitochondrion. So as they're pumping these H pluses across, we are building a large concentration of H plus up in the inner membrane space compared to a smaller concentration in the matrix. So at this point, we've created a concentration gradient. We have a lot of H plus up here, very little H plus down here. A difference in concentration across the distance is called a concentration gradient. We'll call it a proton gradient because H pluses are commonly referred to as protons. Now, H plus wants to flow back across the membrane and diffuse from a high concentration that we've just built up to a low concentration in the matrix. The only way that it can flow back across the membrane and diffuse is through this protein, which is called ATP synthase. And we have a little key to tell us what that is down here. Now, as the H pluses flow through ATP synthase into the matrix, the entire ATP synthase protein turns. That causes these little grooves in the bottom part of the protein to squeeze together and join ADP and P to form ATP. So the movement of H plus through the protein causes it to turn and change shape slightly, which results in the formation of ATP, which is our overall goal. Now, the only thing that I did not mention was our final electron acceptor. Our high energy electrons, after we've used their energy to pump H pluses across, need to have somewhere to go. They end up getting joined with oxygen gas and hydrogen to create water. So that's why oxygen gas is one of the reactants of cell respiration and water is one of the products. All right, I hope that was helpful. Um, we can go over these when I return to class and have an awesome day.